Hey guys, my name is Tommy and welcome back to my shop. So uh, in the last video, uh, when we left, the backboard was all tuned up. Uh, I used the Strobo Soft Stroke Tuner and uh, I'll leave a link here if uh, you haven't seen that video. Uh, what I did so far is that I installed my serial number uh, label. And what I do is I put the serial number and the year on this one. And you know, I want to do that before I, uh, I glue up the whole assembly together. And then on this side, I already had signed up the soundboard la last year when I finished up the, the, the rim and the soundboard. But uh, what I added since last time is the curve all around. So what I did is I glued up the curve and now uh, it's basically the same as uh, when I did my uh, ukulele video. And uh, now I'm ready to do the glue up of the backboard. So we're gonna have a look into that. So like I said, you want to put the label in before you do the glue up. The reason is that once the, the backboard is on, you won't be able to get it on like through the, the aperture. So uh, I, I just used some uh, tight bond and, and just glued that piece of paper on there. And then uh, the curve here, if you remember the, the ukulele video, it was a square kind of... Uh, curve. This one's on the 45. The first thing I want to make sure is uh, I've got my uh, my center line here and my center line there and I'm going to use my uh, center line of where my two boards are meeting, my book match. Uh, I want to make sure that there's uh, a little bit of overhang or that I'm flush everywhere once that uh, once the the line the lineup is done. So once I'm sure that this is okay, I'll be able to uh, get ready to uh, line up the the lineup pins. I'm just gonna mark myself a little pinhole here and a pinhole there of center, and then I'm gonna drill uh, little holes and I'm gonna put some uh, nails and the, the pointy end sticking up, and that way that's gonna be just enough sticking up just to line up my uh, backboard. Now that I have my uh, uh, little finishing nails sticking out, I use the 116 bit to make the hole. Uh, I'm gonna realign my backboard Make sure everything lines up, and once everything lines up, I'm just going to press down on my two line of pins, and that's going to be enough to hold everything in place while I do the glue up. So, for the glue up, I'm going to be using those little spool clamps. Uh, hopefully those are long enough, otherwise I'm going to have to change them. Yep. And uh, the way it goes is just like that, so... And I'm going to put... Now, right now I'm going to do a dry fit to make sure that there's no issues, no gap anywhere. And then when once I'm happy with uh, uh, the, the seam everywhere, I'll be able to apply the glue. So I was able to do the whole dry fit with... and, and be, I was able to re remove all the gaps that was all, <coughs> all around. Uh, the scroll is going to need a clamp because uh, there was uh, the, the scroll section was actually sticking up about an eighth of an inch. So the spool clamp would actually probably mark the, the scroll on the spruce side. So by using a, a clamp like this one with some leather holes like those, uh, that, that should take care of the whole uh, issue. So uh, I'm going to get uh, ready for the glue up.
So now that we've seen that all those uh, little spool clamp works, uh, I'll show you how to make your own. Well, uh, you, you could go ahead and, and buy some from uh, from uh, eBay. eBay has them, uh, I think it's close to $80 for 30 of them. Or you can make your own and they're pretty simple. So I'll just show you how to do that. So basically my, my spool clamps are just two little pieces of white oak that, I, that are uh, on a carriage pole. Uh, whenever I do a mandolin or uh, the mandola I just made, uh, I use those ones which are uh, <clears throat> there are three and a half carriage bolts. Then when I make a guitar, I use those ones because those ones are six inch uh, carriage bolts. Um, uh, the problem I have right now is whenever I make a guitar, I have to take all my little wood disc and change them and put them uh, on onto this one. And then, so that's that's time consuming. So what I'm going to do is make another set of those little discs for uh, my six inch carriage bolt. So that way uh, I'm always going to have both sets ready. Um, those uh, carriage bolts are fairly readily available. I got those ones from uh, uh, a local hardware store. Uh, so uh, they, they were uh, fairly inexpensive and I'll use crop of white oak that I have in the shop to make those. So I've got a bunch of those oak leftovers that's from a very very old project that I never ever finished. Uh, that was one of my very first attempt at making a table and it turned out really really uh, really bad so uh, I just kept it in the the back and now I'm gonna be reusing the little pieces of wood that I've got left. So what I'm gonna do because this is glued and uh, some of them have a a dowel pin in them, I'll just cut them on the bandsaw and then that's gonna create my, my material for my, uh, my little discs. So at this point, some of you might be wondering why I don't use a dowel. I would just have to cut pieces out of the dowel and then I would be all done. The reason is that I don't want to have to center or align each pieces to get that center hole, which was done at the same time as the hole saw. Plus, uh, when I do the carriage bolt, I'm going to have to to make sure that when the carriage bolt is at the end here, there's a little square uh, end, and I'm going to have to pound that in and make sure that it fits. And this this side grain and the dowel would end up being end grain so it would be uh, tougher to get in and probably end up splitting up so for that reason that's why I'm not going to use a dowel.
So as you can tell, those pull clamps are going to work fine for this guitar. And now I've got two sets. And then the smaller ones will work for smaller instruments like uh, violins or mandolins or mandolas. So uh, as you can tell, like th those things are very, very easy to make. They're uh, a lifesaver in the shop if you're planning on building an instrument. And the fact you're, of making them yourself, like the, the hardware was roughly about $25 and I took all the wood here. Um, some of them you'll see online, they have like a, a cork lining and they're, they're, uh, the, the edge is uh, square. I round my edges because of the profile on the mandola. And also I have a, a bit of an arc when it comes to the guitars. So I don't want to have like a, a, a square edge uh, just marking the actual wood. So that's why I, I rounded the edges like that. And that way I don't have to have the cork. Another thing is that uh, you don't want to apply too much pressure with those because you don't want to starve your joint. So by, by doing that, you, the amount of mar marking on the wood should be minimal. So once again, thanks for stopping by. Uh, now you know how to make your own spool clamps and how to use them. Uh, if you enjoyed that video, please let me know by uh, clicking the button. And um, uh, don't forget to subscribe because there will be uh, more videos coming up uh, for uh, instrument making and also uh, woodworking related videos. So I uh, hope you have a, a great week and I'll see you next time. Now I'm going to need a bigger container.